What's up guys, it's MBSK Gaming, and in this video I'm going to be having a Witcher 3 rant. Now, I haven't uploaded in a while, and I've been very sporadic, but I'm going to start getting a regular upload schedule again. I have some better equipment, kind of happy with my setup, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, in this video, I'm going to be talking about The Witcher 3. Now, I just beat it last night, I know this is super late, a lot of people have played it, but I like to wait until all the DLCs come out to play my games. So while I was playing, I thought it was probably one of the best games I'd ever played on my new generation console. Like it was amazing, it was so immersive, the combat it wasn't as good as Dark Souls, but it was way better than any other fantasy game I played. The dialogues, it was, it was amazing. And uh, I don't know if you played it or not, but if I was you, I don't know if I'd play it. Because I'm actually kind of ticked off by the way it ended. Now, the game itself was amazing. I thought it was awesome. But then I got to the end and it sucks. Now, spoiler alert, I'm gonna say some stuff that you might not know. But at the end of the game, pretty much after you win, there's 36 different end world states that, that depend on decisions you make. And a lot of decisions are small decisions. Like, they're not obvious like most games. Which, I actually kind of liked that, but it did have me going back three hours to make decisions to make sure Siri live. Spoiler alert. I'm going to put a warning at the beginning of the video. But, uh, she, there's one that she lives and she becomes a witcher. There's one where she lives and she becomes the empress. And then there's one where she just dies. And then there's, there's also the war going on. You have a handful of different decisions you can make in that that affect the world. Uh, the Red Baron, depending on if you make the right decision, he could end up hanging himself or end up living. So, as you know, there's a lot of small decisions that have a big effect. So, I played it and I got to the end and uh, I realized that Siri had died about five minutes after I had won. I knew, like, it didn't, it wasn't obvious because I didn't play the whole ending because I was kind of ticked off. So I went back and I replayed for three hours. I made the right decisions in which if you haven't played it yet and you are going to play it, I would make sure like if, if you know you want that ending, you should definitely plan ahead so you don't have to backtrack. And I was just lucky because I, I don't have many save files. I usually only keep one, but I had two. So I had to go way, way back. But if I knew what I'm about to tell you, I wouldn't have went way, way back. So at the end of the game, you have a different cutscene depending on the decisions you make. And after that, though, you, you like, Iman, I, I went to go talk to the Emperor, and the Siri lives one. And then I went, got a sword for her, gave it to her. And then it showed me, like, uh, the little story time animation things where it showed all the decisions I made. And I was like, yeah, this is a pretty cool uh, world state I've created. I I'm kind of happy. And then. It just throws you right back into the game, but it, it, it puts you before the battle. And that's what really ticked me off. Like, it puts you before you beat the game, which kind of defeats the purpose of this whole open world immersion. And all the people, most of the characters that uh, you did stuff through without the game, you can't even find them anymore. Like, I was looking forward to moving into Kavor with Triss. Uh, but that never happened. You can't even visit there. And there's been so many arguments about it on uh, different forum sites. And there's even one of the forums on the game producer's website. And they tried to reply to it. Uh, they said stuff like, oh, it'd just be so hard, so much more work to do that. To add in the extra lines of dialogue. Well, first off, it's your game. It'd be like going to Walmart and then bagging half your groceries and being like, yeah, it'd be too much work for me to bag the rest. But uh, it, it just really ticked me off because it's kind of what you work for towards every game to have the ending, just kind of chill out at the end, hang out with the other characters, and it, it's ruined. It, it ruined my experience. Now, I know you're saying the Blood and Wine DLC. You can get a house once you complete it, which is another long quest line that I'm not going to do. But, uh... If you choose the romance Triss and you successfully do it, she'll come, or Yennefer, 
If you don't do either of them and one of your endings was Siri lives, then Siri comes and she'll stay with you. And if Siri died and you didn't romance either of them, Dandelion comes, all right? And then you'll have, this is literally what you have, one unique conversation with them. And then after that, all they do is say like, hey, yes, Geralt, all right? It's a rip off. It, the whole character building is just kind of over with after you beat the game. It's very similar to Dragon Age, but at least in Dragon Age Inquisition, to be specific. But at least in that game, the people were still there and you could talk to them. But that's really my rant for Witcher 3. So uh, if I was you, I'd play it. I wouldn't beat it. I'm still disappointed with it. But uh, thanks for watching. Comment what you think.